Hi, this is John with Everyday Bible Study. So glad to have you here with us today. And we're looking at the uh, book of 1 John, and we're in the final chapter, the final part of the final chapter. We're closing up the book here. And uh, we're looking, um, at, starting at verse 13 of chapter 5, and it says, That you might know, may know. And it says here, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. So here John is reassuring these Christians that have put their faith in Jesus Christ uh, that uh, uh, God is providing them eternal life, that they're going to live forever. They're not going to face the punishment of Satan uh, that, that Satan is going to face. They're not going to face hell, but they're going to be with Jesus Christ in heaven. And it says, And this is the confidence that we have toward him, if that we ask anything according to his will, that he hears us. And uh, he's going to actually provide uh, those things that are on our heart that we ask him. You say, now that's getting a little far out there, John. Uh, but that's a conditional promise. First, we've got to realize it, if this is saying that if we ask anything according to his will. So basically, if we ask God for something and God wants us to have it, uh, then he will provide it for us. But uh, there are conditions, uh, two other conditions that uh, go along with this. The first condition is that we have faith, uh, that uh, we believe that God will provide us those things that we need. And he's not promised us to give us the things that we want. But he has promises that, promised us that he will meet our needs. And um, then uh, the other thing is we have to be living a righteous life. We have to be staying away from sin, doing uh, what God wants us to do. And if we're living right, then he answers our prayers. There's no guarantee that he will answer our prayers unless we're living right. And it says here, If anyone sees his brother committing a sin not leading to death, he shall ask, and God will give him life to those that commit sins that do not lead to death. And it says, There is a sin that leads to death, and I do not say that one should pray for that. And uh, all wrongdoing is sin, but there's a sin that uh, that does not lead to death. So, you know, you can do lots of things, and, uh, you know, God has forgiveness for just about every sin that's out there. It doesn't matter how dirty you are, how many things you've done, how many people you've hurt. Uh, you know, you can be a murderer. If you look at the people who God used in the Bible, um, you know, David, who was the king of Israel, and he was used mightily by God. Uh, the Bible says he had the he, um, David was the apple of God's eye, but uh, uh, lusted after a man's wife and Tucker is his wife, and sent him into battle to be killed. And, you know, they said that's a very disgusting thing, very despicable thing that David did. And it was. But, uh, and he repented of his sin and turned back to God, and God restored him. There were very much repercussions for that sin, but uh, God uh, did continue to love David in spite of that sin. And you look at uh, Paul, who wrote probably two-fifths of the New Testament. And um, he wrote more books in the New Testament than any other writer. And uh, most of the theology of the New Testament is based upon Paul. But if uh, before Paul got saved, he was a Jew. And basically, he was a Jewish terrorist. He was taking people out of their homes, pulling them out of their homes, and leading, the, bringing them into death, having them put in prison, and sometimes they were uh, murdered uh, because of their Christian faith. And um, Jesus came to uh, Paul directly, and this was after he had ascended into heaven. And uh, he basically came to him saying something similar to what uh, Jesus is saying to a lot of the uh, people in Islam now. And, uh, you know, he's basically uh, saying, uh, you know, why are you persecuting me? And, uh, yeah, ba you know, why are you persecuting my people? And he made himself real to Paul. 
And Paul repented of his sin. And he gained faith in Jesus Christ. And uh, Jesus made him an apostle. And Jesus taught him for two years uh, after his ascension uh, with direct contact to him. We don't really understand exactly how that happened. But uh, Paul says that it happened. And we have no reason to not believe him because he knows more about Jesus than probably any of the other apostles. And more about Christianity than any of the other apostles. And um, um, oops, my tablet's flipping around on me. See, but um, we have this sin that leads to death. And uh, God can, you know, if God could forgive Paul, if God could forgive David, uh, He can forgive anybody, and uh, just about any sin. There is one sin that He will not forgive us, forgive a person of. And that's that sin that leads to death. And that's that sin of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And uh, Jesus said that you could even take the name of God in, in vain. And that's breaking one of the Ten Commandments. But we can be forgiven of that. And you might say, well, I have taken the name of God in vain. I've said God, blah, blah. And... Uh, um, you know, I, I didn't know that was forgivable. That is forgivable. And you need to repent of that sin if you've done that and ask God for forgiveness. But he can and will forgive you of that. Uh, but what he does not forgive is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, um, you know, there's some questions as to what it actually is. And there's one thing that is for certain in, is that the Holy Spirit calls us uh, God calls us, you know, to salvation. Calls us to come to Jesus Christ and put our faith on Him. And if we reject that call uh, on a continuous basis and continue to reject that call for the rest of our life, then we have blasphemed the Holy Spirit. And uh, we have no chance at salvation. And that's not a, uh, a sin that can be forgiven. Because uh, we've rejected Jesus Christ and we rejected the call of the Holy Spirit to come to God. Maybe God's calling you right now to come to Him. And He has been maybe for a while. And uh, you've, you've been afraid or uh, you didn't fully understand everything. And you don't have to fully understand everything. You just have to know the basics. You just have to know that Jesus Christ is Lord. That Jesus Christ died for your sin. And that He loves you and He wants to save you. And know that he died for your sins, and that your sins were, died upon the cross. And he took all the sins of mankind, including our sins, on the cross. And then he took the wrath of God upon himself. And when he died, he became sin, and that sin died with him. And then he rose from the dead on the third day. And he conquered over sin and death. And has, uh, actually it was the power of the Holy Spirit that wrote, helped him raise from the grave. And uh, he uh, still lives to this day. And he's coming back for his church. And uh, But now if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ can save you of your sin, if you repent of your sin, make a lifelong heart decision to turn away from a life of sin and turn toward Jesus Christ. And that you want to start living for him, start living for God. Then you can be saved and you can be forgiven of each and every sin that you've ever committed. And uh, that, isn't that a beautiful thing that he would do that for us? And uh, this tablet keeps flipping around. Okay, But it says here that we know that everyone has been born of God does not keep on sinning. So that he doesn't want us to remain in sin. Uh, but he who is born of God protects himself and the evil one does not touch him. So uh, you can have assurance that... Uh, the evil one, being Satan himself, cannot drag your soul to hell once you are a true child of God. And can can he oppress you? Uh, can he try to tempt you? Sure he can. But uh, he doesn't have power over you up and above that of God. And um, so now if you keep on sinning and you keep on doubting, then that puts you in a very dangerous light. But if you're truly born of God, God protects him. And I know one time where I, where I was very, very uh, depressed and even suicidal. And God protected me in that case. 
and, uh, and this was after I was born again, but uh, I was under severe uh, satanic attack, spiritual warfare, and that's something that can't happen to Christians, but uh, God protected me. It says that uh, we know that we're from God, and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. That's quite a line right there. And it really tells us two different things. The first part of that says, we know that we're from God. But we're not part of the world. We're separated from the world. We're brought out of the world. The world being that evil uh, system of influence that's of Satan. And it says, and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. So Satan basically controls the system that's in the world. He said, well, I thought the, you know, uh, the song says, he's got the whole world in his hands. Well, he does have ultimate control. But Satan is still in the world. And there will be a time where he will overcome Satan. And uh, the whole world will be controlled strictly by Christ. And the evil will be cast out of the earth. And uh, then, uh, and, and Satan will be cast out of the earth. And uh, Jesus will be in total control. But right now is not that time. Uh, right now, most of the people of the world are controlled by Satan, are controlled by evil. And uh, that's the reason that we've got to get away from that. And he's provided us a way out. He's provided us Jesus Christ, the Savior. It says, and we know that the Son of God has come and given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true in his son Jesus Christ and he is a true God and eternal life it says little ch children keep yourself from idols so we gotta keep our focus and our faith on Jesus Christ and uh, you know John gave us that last little thing there it said you gotta stay away from idols what are idols? idols are false, false gods or satanic gods that uh, ways that Satan tries to trick us and it, it's usually things that captures our attention, captures our focus in life. And an idol can be something as simple as a cell phone. It can be a car. It can be a house. Uh, it's usually some, it can be another person that uh, you know we're just so focused on. We think of this other person more than Jesus or more than God. But God is to be the number one focus of our life. God is to be our first love. And you say, well, can't I love my children? Can't I love my wife or my husband? Sure, you can. But Jesus is to be number one. And when Jesus is number one, and all this other stuff works out a whole lot better. And uh, he's, he's the one that demands it because he's the creator of the universe. And uh, he wants to be number one in our life. And if he's not number one in your life, then, you know, uh, we're to stay away from those things uh, that uh, would take our affection away from God. Now, are we to leave our wife or leave our kids or are we to get rid of her car? Well, there may be a few circumstances where we need to do uh, something like that. We may have something that uh, is very, very close to our heart that we need to get rid of. I had a friend who uh, is a pastor who got rid of his dog. And his dog was was you know very very dear to him, and uh, but it took his mind and his focus off of God, and uh, he gave that dog up in order that uh, he could focus more on on God, and you know I don't think God would ask that of most people, uh, but uh, most people uh, probably their dog wasn't a point of focus. So much that it was an idol, but he felt that that was an idol for him, and he gave it up. And you know, idols can also be false gods. Uh, that's what uh, the old idols were of the Bible. They would be, uh, they'd make what they called graven images, and uh, it would be, uh, you know, for Baal or some other false god, Diana, different different uh, uh, type of idols that they would worship. And uh, you know, there's a lot of false gods in this world. There's a lot of false religions in this world. Uh, you know, false religions like Islam and uh, Buddhism and um, New Age religions and 
various, uh, you know, uh, religions of the world. But uh, we need to turn away from those things and turn toward God and make Jesus Christ the focus of our life. Because he's the only one that can save us. He's the only one that can provide life. Uh, life comes from no other name than Jesus Christ. And uh, we need to overcome sin in our life. And the only way that we overcome sin is uh, by taking on a relationship with the one that overcome the devil himself. And that was Jesus. Jesus overcome the devil. He overcome the world. And he will defeat the devil in the last days. And we're going to study about that in the book of Revelation uh, in our next series of studies. But uh, let's pray uh, yeah, before we go here. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for your word and thank you that Jesus loved us enough that he died for us and that he gave his life uh, to uh, be the sacrifice for our sins. Lord, we pray that many will repent of their sin and make a life decision to turn away from that life of sin and run away from sin and run toward Jesus Christ and believe on Jesus Christ for their salvation. And Lord, uh, help them, help give them faith and help them to exercise that faith. And the Bible tells us that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Lord, help them to confess that Jesus Christ um, died for their sins and help them to believe that he rose from the dead and he's still living today. And he has power over sin and death. And help uh, those that are watching to put their faith in Jesus Christ for their salvation. And Jesus will save. And Lord, um, I just pray that many people will watch this message. And will read the word of God. And will come to Jesus Christ in full salvation. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for watching the Everyday Bible Study. And uh, share us on social media. Share this message, the Word of God, with other people. And uh, Or if you can uh, uh, get uh, Bibles or tracts, share that with people. And, uh, you know, you might bring somebody else into God's kingdom. If you got saved yourself, you might lead somebody else to salvation in Jesus Christ. That's basically how the church grows. And uh, your testimony and your witness might be just as... Uh, effective as any preacher that's out there and uh, so uh, you know we can say through the power of Christ you can do it you can lead somebody to Jesus Christ share the word with them and then also uh, subscribe to our channel and uh, go to the YouTube site and then hit the subscribe button then hit the little bell that's uh, after you hit the subscribe button and receive notifications as to when we post these videos we try to get about three a week up and uh, uh, just keep studying the Word of God and keep getting close to God. And we're going to get into the book of Revelation next. Looking forward to getting started in that series. And uh, it's a very, very scary book if you're not right with God. But if you are right with God, then it's a book of comfort. And uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful book. And uh, so uh, make sure that you're right with God. Um, but uh, we're going to look at the end times and what's going to be happening in the future. And God wrote it down for us and told us all about it. And uh, it's a future that most of us, I believe, won't have to personally experience. But it is a great thing to avoid this. And we can't avoid this by being part of God's family, part of the church. Because Jesus Christ is coming back for his church. And uh, he's, we're going to rise to meet him in the air. And uh, he's got a beautiful place in heaven waiting for us right there waiting for you and uh, because he loves you and uh, so until next time this is John with Everyday Bible Study praying that you have a great day in Christ